What's up guys, it is me, the Don Fnatic, and welcome to week 4 of the Pokemon Premier League. This week, we are up against Bayern Munich, managed by the one and only Shardy. Now, last week we did come off the back of a very, very long game against Jolt, in which we did actually manage to get the 3-1 victory. So, we are sitting 2-1 and one this season. Very much the same as our opponent Shardy this uh, season so far. So, both 2-1, and one, both have the opportunity to go 3-1 and one and start pushing for a top, you know, sort of position in the league. Um, now, looking at team matchup um, against the draft, Shardy has a full draft of 11, making team prep hard enough as it is, but he has probably got the most disgusting core I think you'll ever see uh, in Megazard X, Tapu Fini, and Jirachi, the Dragonsteel Fairy core. Uh, furry or fairy? I can't remember what I said. Um, we definitely don't want to see a fairy core, but knowing Shardy, who knows what it'll bring. Um, so it's a disgusting core, which I do have the tools to break down. Um, that's the one good thing I have going for me this game. Um, sadly, my Mega Beedrill, which kind of breaks it down, is is beaten by Doug Trio, and my whole draft cannot handle Scarf Doug Trio offensively. Um, I can only check it defensively. Um, admittedly, I have two very good defensive checks to it, but Shardy's also got very good answers to those. Well, one more so than the other. So, quickly look over uh, Shardy's team. It's pretty much what I expected. I was maybe expecting a Skun Tank to deal with Necrozma. Otherwise, he hasn't got much to deal with it at all. Um, I'll go over my Necrozma set shortly. Um, he has got the, obviously, the Aerodactyl, the Mega Charizard X, which uh, I'm terrified of. Um, very much expecting a bulky setup variant, but I have got answers to this. Um, I've got the, got the Rotom, which I considered was, uh, like, a possibility. Because um, Togekiss is something that I would need to bring to answer Doug Trio, and also the um, Superior should decide to bring it. Um, he has got Jirachi, which is obviously uh, a vital part of his core, so I was definitely expecting that. Doug Trio was 100% definite. I've got so many things that get destroyed by it. Uh, as you can see, three things alone in my draft. Um, I didn't bring Kartana, which again gets ruined by it. Uh, Gudra gets ruined by it again because it's not the most defensive thing. Um, what else have I got left in my draft? Which should bring Steelix a again. Doesn't really appreciate it. Um, so I was very limited to what I could actually bring to deal with that. Again, like I said, only defensive checks, no offensive checks to it really. Um, and Tapu Fini is there just to be fat. So uh, obviously at this point I don't know Shardy's set. I do have it like his whole team, but I haven't got it open, so I won't go over it. Um, because obviously at this point in the game I wouldn't have known what I was coming up against. So I'll go with what I've got. Uh, I've got the Shed Shell Electivire which I'm going to bluff as Choice Scarfer. Turn 1. Looking at his team he hasn't really got anything that appreciates it. Obviously if he goes into Dougie I can switch out. That's fine. And at this point I have a healthy Gastrodon which can take it on. Which goes nicely into the next thing. Fully defensive Gastrodon. He hasn't got an answer for it other than Superior. But I have a Mega Beedrill which can switch into a Leaf... Uh, Leaf Storm very easily. I have got Tokus, which can switch into Leaf Storm very easily, and I have got the Gudra, which is obviously immune to Grass Stab. Um, its main sort of form of setup, so I was very confident he wouldn't actually bring it. So Gastron is there to deal with Megazard, um, the Jirachi, the Doug Trio, and potentially the Aerodactyl. So it's there for a lot, and it's it's a lot I'm asking of it this game. If it could deal with at least half of them, I'd be very happy. Mega Beedrill kind of just shits on his core a bit. Um, fully defensive Jirachi does not appreciate knockoff and X-Scissor, and I can just U-turn if I'm not happy that I can kill it. Um, very was, well, I was expecting defensive Aerodactyl for it because that's all he had on his draft to actually really go up against it well. Um, we've got Necrozma next. It's kind of like a filler. Um, I didn't really know what to bring, but I looked at it and Psycho Cut and Earthquake just does a massive ow to his team, so I am Swords Dance Moonlight. Um, hindsight, Rock Polish may have been useful. Um, and if I did have that, I could have potentially just swept him, which is nice. Um, Jirachi, uh, yeah, is just fat. Dog Trio, I was adamant it was going to be Scarfed, because um, it outspeeds my whole draft that way. Um, and especially with Mega B running around, he can't really afford to let me have that. And then there was Tappy Finny being gross, but I've got Electivire and I have got um, the Beedrill, which can pretty much kill it. So... Looking at team matchup, I think this could go either way. Um, he does lead off with the Aerodactyl. Sorry for no in-game sounds. For some reason, my uh, Sony Vegas does not like uh, the sound. And then when I handbrake it to have the sound, it then crashes every time I use that file. So no in-game sound, unfortunately. So I'm going to bluff the Scarf turn one, like I said. Um, it's very viable for me to bring a Scarf to Electivire this game. So he is obviously going to scout that out. He didn't think I'd stay uh, in. And even if he did stay in, uh, expecting me to switch out, I would have expected him to go for Stealth Rocks anyway. So, he does switch into Jirachi. It does actually a really good amount, considering I'm only specially attack invested. Uh, and I've got a free switch into my Infernape. Now, Infernape is probably my main way of taking this Jirachi on. Um, should have maybe gone straight into Necrozma at this point, but I'm going to U-turn out because 
I'm not sure if he's Okaberry at this point. I haven't seen that he's got... Sorry, I've seen that he hasn't got leftovers, so who knows what he has. Um, he, Shardy does actually have the Okaberry, it turns out. Uh, he does go for Heart Stamp, because obviously that would kill me. I expect it would kill me, or at least do a lot of damage um, if it didn't. Uh, and, you know, free switch into Crosma, pretty much back to full health. So, Shardy goes for Wish here, revealing he is a bulkier set, which I kind of expected. And this is perfect. I thought he probably can't touch me, because, you know, I don't even know what he'd have. Um to actually hit me super effective, other than Shadow Ball, which probably wouldn't do much anyway. Um, so I do get three Swords Dance up, and now something's going to die on his team, um, which is nice, um, but he goes for the Toxic, which is sad time, because um, if he didn't get this Toxic off, then the next sort of load of events wouldn't have happened. Um, but I do get the Earthquake off, and I do kill Jirachi, which is excellent, because this means I can now freely spam Poison Jab, and pretty much do damage to anything on his team, which is excellent. Because um, it kind of opens the way up for Beedrill. I was also very scared of Scarf Jirachi um, as a potential option if he didn't want to bring to a trio. Uh, in comes the Rotom, though. And uh, this Rotom is a pain to me all game because it is a uh, sub-toxic hex set with Pain Split. Now, as soon as I saw sub, I pretty much figured out he'd have Pain Split. And uh, I didn't really think he'd be carrying Toxic, admittedly, on any of his mons, uh, or many at least. Um, because he has obviously got that Misty Terrain on his Tapu Fini, which would be counterproductive to bring in lots of Toxic mons. But no, Shardy decides to bring two Pokemon with Toxic on, and I didn't bring any, which is uh, a shame. But obviously I'm plus two, so I can break this thing sub easy. Uh, I'm pretty sure Psycho Cut would probably kill it, to be honest. Um, but he's just going to keep subbing. And I'm like, well, he's going to keep subbing. He's going to click Pain Split at some point, And I don't want to switch A to let him have a free sub. And B for him to get some um, Pain Split damage off. So I am actually going to have to sacrifice Necrozma to this thing one way or another. Which, in hindsight, is really annoying. Because uh, it may affect the later game, as you'll see. Um, so uh, I am actually recovering. Obviously, I've got Moonlight, so I can recover HP if I want. But recovering HP would be counterproductive in this case. Because he'll just get all his health back through Pain Split. So... It's kind of a losing battle, but I just can't let him have, you know, sit behind a sub for free. So, um, I'm going to keep clicking Psycho Cut. My aim here is to let Necrozma die, um, not have this thing behind a sub, and then I get a free switch into Mega Beedrill, and it's a free knockoff. So, um, at this point, I think he's going to click Hex. If not, he clicks Substitute one more time, and then he clicks Hex, and that's when he reveals it. Kind of expected it, um, as he Toxic my Jirachi. Um... It would make sense for it to be his only one move if he has got Toxic on this as well. I was very scared this thing would have a will o -Wisp as well, so that's why I didn't actually straight up switch into Mega Beedrill. Um, and Necrozma goes down. So uh, it wasn't a roll, I think that was just a clean KO. I was max HP, if I was maybe specially invested, I could have lived. Um, but I haven't actually looked in the couch too much. So Mega, I mean, sorry, Rotom's actually going to die obviously to a knockoff at this point. I have got knockoff, X is a Poison Jab U-turn. Didn't need the drill run for Rachi or Zard because Poison Jab and... X's are combined do the same. So, uh, very much expecting either him to stay in and sack it, um, his Rotom that is, or bring in the Aerodactyl. So I'm going to click Knock Off. Even if he wants to bring in Zard, that's fine. I'll U-turn out. Uh, and probably go into Infernape, because I am Scarfed in case things, you know, start to get out of hand. I had to bring Scarf Beedrill, um, just in case he did get to plus one. Um, and that Knock Off does a lot. Now, looking at the Calcs at this point, um, I could tell he was defensive, and I can't kill him with Poison Jab. So I'm going to U-turn out of there, because now he hasn't got Rocky Helmet on, which is nice. Um, so I know now that he can't really take another com well, you know, he can't switch in again. And I'm going to go into Dash Gastrodon, because he really can't do anything to me. Now, he stays in and clicks Stealth Rock, so if I'd have actually clicked Poison Jab there, um, I could have got a free kill. And then U-turned out, um, which obviously would have stopped the trio coming in. So that would have been quite nice, but um, it doesn't really matter, because Gastrodon is in, and Stone is just nothing, because it is fully defensive Aerodactyl. It's uninvested, it does minuscule damage, and... Obviously, Scald is going to kill. Now, he said he overpredicted a bit here. He could have obviously gone to Tapu Fini. Can't really touch Tapu Fini, um, but I think I would beat it one on one. Obviously, because I have the recovery, uh, he only has leftovers. I have Earth Power, could get with them special defense drops, and I do have Clear Smog in case he was Calm Mind. And also, obviously, I have Clear Smog for the um, Charizard if that starts saying up on me as well. So, he goes for the substitute. Um, he hasn't revealed Toxic to me, so at this point, I'm thinking, right, I can just stay in and Scald. But the way he's brought it in, I should have probably realised. I mean, I know his plan is to actually try and get the pain split off. Because he wants the health back on this thing. And obviously Gastrodon has a huge HP stat anyway. But everything is at full health on my team. And whatever I switch into, he's going to recover a lot of health back anyway. 
Um, maybe should have switched to Infernape at this point because Jirachi's dead and that was the main thing, you know, that is beating this game. Um, so I could have potentially just, you know, Flare Blitz and tried to get damage off on something. So, uh, and kept this thing healthy. So I do click Scald. I don't get the burn, but I can see it's easily going to be able to break a sub if he decides to do it again and try and play this um, Pain Split game. Because I have seen Hex, uh, Pain Split, and Substitute, so I don't actually know if he has Toxic at this point. Um, I think it's this turn where he knows he can live another Scald, and he actually gets Toxic off, which is really, really annoying. Because obviously Gastrodon was my answer to many things on his team. Um, so I do click Scald, and again I don't actually get the burn, which is annoying. Because if I'd have got the burn on the first turn, it would obviously negate the leftovers. And I think now he may be in a position to potentially set up another substitute, but you know, if I'd have got the school burn, it would have really helped him limit the substitute uses he'd have left. Um, and obviously help take this thing down a bit quicker. So at this point, I'm like, right, I have to switch out, uh, take my chances that he can't set up a sub, and that he might go for Hex. He could click the Pain Split here as well, um, just to get some last ditch damage off on me and uh, to die to a scald. Which is what he does, he goes to the pain split and I figured that this thing would be my best switching because after rocks um, I'd go down to 75% so you know it's at least trying to limit what he can recover. Um, but I do have uh, flame on this thing which I'm pretty confident will um, obviously break the sub. I really really wish I could have bought uh, the heal bell on this thing but I had to bring defog. It's the main reason I bought it in, uh, I needed to get defog off just so um, B can switch around freely. Um, his Stealth Rock is dead, so I know once I get the Defog, they're gone for good. Um, so I do actually just click Defog and get rid of the Stealth Rocks, which is excellent, because now I have to... Now as long as I can... Again, it's, it's like what it was before. As long as I can keep this thing out from being behind a sub, then I can bring Beedrill in, click Knock Off for free, and then I just start to do some good damage to his team again. So, the only negative thing about this is now Gastrodon and Togekiss, my two best answers to the Doug Trio are now poisoned and getting healed. And I can't switch out because this thing's going to get a free sub up every single time. Um, you know, I could have really just bought in Mega B because he can't toxic me. Um, he only do his hex and, you know, it's a weak move when I'm not poisoned. So, and Mega B actually has decent special defense. So, I could have probably done that in hindsight, but again, that's hindsight. Um, I'm going to click Flamethrower until I die to Poison and Hex. Um, I can't, again, like I said, let this thing have a free substitute. So, uh, I'm going to click do it, keep doing that. Um, because I realise that Gastrodon is pretty much my main win condition at this point. When Dugtrio comes in, I have to try and get that thing in as well. Um, he does Hex here and I do live, which is excellent thanks to the natural bulk of Tokus. And Flamethrower does bring it down to a, a decently low amount to the point where U-Turn is guaranteed to kill. Uh, didn't do the calc. I uh, could have obviously clicked knock off, but you know I can't risk the fact that Doug Trio is going to come in as soon as I kill this thing. So I have to click U-turn because if he click if he goes into um, Doug Trio, it probably dies to the U-turn. Uh, I haven't done the calc, but it's a Doug Trio. It's not very strong. Um, so there's no rocks up, and it's a free switch into B. I'm going to click U-turn and get a free kill uh, on this thing or initiative if he wants to switch anything in. So this thing goes down. Uh, unfortunately, the damage is done. You know, it done its job. It taken down my Necrozma and my Tokus, two huge, you know, threats on any team. So, Infernape's going to come in now because I'm Scarfed. I'm thinking I can U-turn. In comes the Dugtrio, confirms my fears that it is Scarfed. I have nothing other than Gastrodon to hit this thing, so I have to try and play around it. Uh, if I was Sashed, then this Dugtrio would be dead, um, but I had to be Scarfed. I, c I say I have to be. Obviously, I'd had to have got rid of Rocks if Zard was setting up and I could live anyone hit. So maybe, you know, Mac Punch and then Close Combat would have been a good combination to have with Focus Sash, but hey, that's uh, good to know. This thing is Scarfed, and obviously Gastrodon is my only answer. I have to click Scald here. Uh, not Scald, sorry. I have to click Recover here, try and get up to as much damage as possible. Um, and I haven't, well, I say I haven't got a switch in. I should have switched into Mega Beedrill um, here, knowing that I need to keep this thing as much health as possible. But I'm actually going to click the Clear Smog which um, I bought, like I said, for the potential setup on Zard and Carmind on this thing. Um, so he does go for Moonblast, uh, and it doesn't do too much at all. About 60 damage, 70 damage. And I'm not especially defense invested at all. Um, obviously that does nothing, so I can't really stay in. And after the, the fact I recovered first turn, and sort of after all the after turn effects, I've not really made any progress other than taking about 10% off this Tapu Fini. So, um... You know, thinking he might have Surf or Scald, I'll take one. He can't burn me if he has Scald, because uh, Misty Terrain is up. 
So I'm going to switch into the uh, Beedrill, but he can't really click a water move because I have got that free switch in. So he does click Moonblast and uh, it does literally nothing, which is great. Um, I have Beedrill in for free, gets a special attack drop, doesn't actually matter. Here I could have clicked Poison Jab and taken this thing out, but again, uh, the Be uh, the Dugtrio switch is, you know, fairly, you know, uh, uh, well, I can't keep in on this thing. Uh, <laughs> I can't keep Beedrill in because Dugtrio is going to revenge kill whatever I have. And I need Beedrill to take down the uh, Zardex as well. So, um, I do click the knockoff, it gets rid of its leftovers, which is nice, and I have to click U-turn, and go into Electivire. Um, so at this point, it's still fairly even game, uh, as long as I can play around Dugtrio correctly. Um, in comes Boris the Electivire, and this is where Hax kind of tilts me a bit, and really does confirm it in Shardy's favour. He gets the Moonblast uh, crit, which is annoying, and also special attack drop. And I am specially offensive Electivire. I have to click Hidden Power Grass here. Because if he brings in the Doug Trio, then I can hit it, and I'm just hoping for a crit, really. Uh, that was my only way of winning. Could have clicked Thunderbolt there, but, you know, in hindsight, it wouldn't have really mattered. Um, uh, you know, I mean, if I'd have clicked Thunderbolt, actually, to be fair, I could have gone into B, and then potentially, you know, played around with Knockoff and U-Turn. And that meant I wouldn't have had to kill it off this way, and I'd have had Electivire. Uh, well, I could have U-Turn killed it, rather than having to be click uh, Poison Jab here. Sorry if I'm not making sense. Um, so I'm forced to click Poison Jab here is what I'm saying. Whereas if I had to click Thunderbolt, I could have potentially killed it with X's at uh, U-Turn. Um, so that's slightly annoying. Now this thing's obviously Scarfed and it's... Uh, I, I never actually checked to see if it was a Arena Trap. I'm assuming it is. Um, and Beedrill goes down. Now, um, it's it's <laughs> half health Gastrodon against a fully... Uh, well, fully healthy Mega Charizard X and a full HP Dog Trio. Now, I know he's Scarfed at this point, so... Uh, I can take one hit. My only hope is, you know, that it doesn't do much, and I can recover up. Uh, the attack rebuff to Doug Trio really means it does actually do a bit of an owl now, uh, especially with base 100 attack, stab, you know, 100 base power move, so... I can't really sit in here with the Toxic. If I wasn't Toxic, this is where, obviously, if I'd have managed to find out if the Rotom was... My phone's just going off mid-commentary. How professional. Um, that's why, you know, if I hadn't have got this thing Toxic earlier, it would have been really useful. Um, I could have stored this thing out, got up to as much health as possible, you know, and I could have potentially clutched this out a bit easier. Um, but I do just decide to click Scald because it's uh, it's a losing battle, um, and I do actually kill this thing. Um, so I'm not invested at all. Obviously, it's super effective, but Doug Trio is really frail, um, and that only leaves him with a Mega Charizard X. And even though I'm fully defensive, uh, I think uh, I'm just below the enough health to live a Minroll Dragon Claw from Shardy Set. Um, so, I mean, I can't even one-shot it anyway. I've got Earth Power. Uh, I'd need a super duper mega crit. I think it was a 2-hit KO, though. So if I wasn't toxic and I could have obviously recovered up on this thing, then potentially it could have been a different story. However, um, the toxic happened, and it means that he's able to click Dragon Claw and win. So, a really, really close 1-0 uh, against Shardy here. I knew in prep that the Dug Trio would be coming Scarfed, but there was nothing I could really do for it. Maybe other than a Sashmon, which... You know, it would make sense now, uh, looking back, but again, like I've said already many times this narration, hindsight is a, is a cruel mistress. So, really enjoyed that game, Shardy. Uh, it's the second one he's had in uh, two weeks, and um, obviously, I mean, we both agreed it was a really good game. Uh, the crit wasn't important, uh, the special attack maybe was, but it more than anything, I think it was just more tilting to me than, uh, you know, actually affecting the outcome of the game. So... A 1-0 against a, a top player, I can't be mad at that. Uh, I think we both prepped relatively well. Um, and both played relatively well as well. So, um, yeah, I really enjoyed that. It's a shame that, you know, my games versus Shardy go one of two ways. It's either very close. I think we've pretty much gone 1-0 in all the close games we've had. Um, or I hacked the shit out of him. And obviously, from a competitive point, I'd love to hack the shit out of Shardy. Anybody in this planet would love to hack the shit out of Sh uh, Shardy and make him salty, but... Hey ho, uh, for entertainment value and obviously for fun, having a close competitive game is always good. So good game Shardy, make sure you do go check out his links below um, to his YouTube and his Twitter. I think he's nearly at a thousand followers on Twitter, so uh, make sure you do that. He's 3 and one he's obviously up there for the championship this season. Um, he's no longer championshipless, which is disappointing, but hey, uh, a PPL title is still probably his main 
goal. So make sure you go check out all his social media and stuff. Obviously make sure you like this video if you did enjoy because like I said it was a good battle. Um, obviously subscribe if you aren't already and uh, check out my Twitter too. Next week we are up against the Maryland or Terrapins and uh, Under the Radar Kelly. So that will be a really good game. So thank you for watching this video guys. Make sure uh, you leave a like and I will see you very soon for week 5 of the Pokemon Premier League. Take care. Bye.